Health officials are still racing to track the origins of the community outbreak of COVID-19 as the cluster hits 17 cases. Since four members of the same Auckland family tested positive, a student at Mount Albert Grammar is confirmed to have the coronavirus, as well as three workers from a call store, a finance company worker and one of their family members. And there is also seven family members of already infected people who have the coronavirus too. The Director General of Health says all the new positive cases will be moved to managed quarantine facilities. And all staff working at the borders, including our ports and managed isolation facilities, are in the process of being tested. Prior to this latest outbreak, physics professor and disease modeller Sean Hendy was calling for all those frontline workers to be routinely tested once a week. Professor Hendy joins me now via Skype. Kia ora. So 17 cases so far in the community. From what you're seeing here, what is the pattern telling you? So, so everything is still linked to the to the cold stall facility, um, and and that's that's good news in some ways, um, and, you know, because we, we we haven't seen other clusters uh, out there in the community. It's a little bit also a little bit unnerving in the sense that we we still don't know the the route of transmission from the border to the cold stall facility, and that that you know that's absolutely crucial for for us being able to estimate how bad this outbreak might get. You say how it got from the border. Are you convinced that that is where it came from? Yeah, I mean, we, we're, we're very sure that we've eliminated the virus here in New Zealand. So, you know, it, it almost certainly has come somewhere through the border. And I think there's been some indications, um, you know, that from, the, from the genomics that um, already that, that, you know, we are looking at something. It's not something that's, that's closely related to the virus that we had earlier in the year. Are you convinced that this family in South Auckland, which is being referred to as the index case, that they are the beginning of the infection? Uh, so, so no, I don't think that. You know, it, it really does come back to that cold store. So, it's, it, I, I, you know, it's not this family in particular um, that, that that it's pointing to. It goes back to that workplace, and so I think the strongest possibility is some connection from that workplace to to the border some way. So we know that they are taking swabs from products and they're awaiting tests from that. But is that really just to rule it out? In your view, is that an unlikely scenario? Yeah, I, th- I think most things that I've seen suggest that that is unlikely. Um, you know, there's, there's a few pieces of evidence from overseas that do suggest that you, it can be picked up from, from surfaces. But what we know overwhelmingly is it's person-to-person contact that, that, that spreads the, the disease. So, you know, that's, that's still our most likely scenario. So, yeah, you'd want to rule that out, um, obviously, and, you know, that would be important for maintaining future border security as well if that was an issue. Um, but it, it, I, I think it's, it's more to rule that out um, than, than the most likely cause. Okay, so we are expecting a decision tomorrow as to whether the alert levels stay the same, they change or they spread even further. Given that we do not know the origins of this case, would you be comfortable with us, well, being set free again in Auckland? No, I, I think the decision to, to really let us go, let us free out of out of level three in Auckland, that that would only be if we we, got, we had really really clear evidence um, of the chain of transmission, and if that was a relatively short chain of transmission. So we're not looking at other clusters that might have branched out, you know, from you know during the chain chain making its way from the border to the cold store facility. So so I don't think you know um, that, and that's probably not a likely outcome. We probably won't have completely clear evidence about that tomorrow. So I do think we're probably looking at extension of lockdown. As the as the information comes in overnight um, and, and during the morning, that, that'll help build up a bigger picture. And, you know, and, and Cabinet are definitely using that um, in their decision making. We just had you drop out slightly there on Skype, Professor Hendy. So I just want to be clear for our listeners. In oh, your sorry. view, yep. in your view, you would extend the lockdown if we do not know the origins of the infection by, you know, um, by deadline tomorrow, then you believe we should extend the current conditions we're under? Yeah, I think so. I think that would be the, the, the wisest thing to do, give ourselves a little bit more time um, to investigate some of the linkages and, and just make sure we understand that the, the contact to the border. You know, I do think there's going to be more information coming in tomorrow from our contact tracing and from the genomics. Um, so Cabinet may well be in a, in a good position to make a better call tomorrow. But in the absence of, of any information, I think you'd want to extend um, how, from where we are today. 
How long four would you think would be realis- realistic? I, I mean, I, I think, and again, it'll depend on what we learn in the next 24 hours. I mean, if we if we don't learn much new, then I think we, you know, we would push it out um, to maybe give uh, ourselves more time to gather that information. And you know, I know that would probably create a lot more uncertainty for people to push it out just a short amount. Um, if we learn that we overnight um, and tomorrow that we, we have identified other clusters, um, then we might be looking at, at, at an extension of several weeks. And at level three, are you comfortable to remain at level three at this point, or do you think we need to lock it down harder? Um, I, I, you know, my personal preference would be to go for a harder lockdown um, because that, that that will be able to be in lockdown for a shorter period of time. But that's quite a difficult uh, decision. You know, they'll have to they'll have to take quite a few um, things into account. Um, you know, including the ability um, of of the city to maintain its borders at, at, at level four for uh, that period of time. So, you know, I think it's I think it's a difficult decision between level three and level four. We think both are, are, are able to contain the virus, but level four would would, would um, eliminate it faster. Okay, so the rest of the country is at level two. Today, we kind of get a more fulsome picture of where some of these infective people have been. Rotorua, Taupo, Waikato. Again, from what you know and your modelling skills, do we need to do any more outside of Auckland in terms of containment? I mean, I, I think at the moment, um, you know, people, and this is this is really for the way the way individuals behave. You know, level two is at the moment is probably a reasonable restriction given what we know. Um, but you know, we should all be cautious. We should assume that the virus has travelled outside Auckland, um, and that means you know being really aware of of symptoms. And if you do um, start exhibiting symptoms, uh, you know, stay home from work um, and make sure you get a test. So we're up to seventeen confirmed community cases at the moment. I'm sure you've been running some figures. How high are you anticipating it will go? Yeah, so let me let me be clear. There's big, big error bars here. And, uh, you know, and it depends a lot on the information that we'll find out in the next um, uh, 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 24 hours. But, you know, the, the simulations we've been running suggest that, that, that maybe 30 to 40 active cases um, at the moment and with a sort of an upper limit of 70 to 80, something like that. If they are all connected to that one cluster, is that the best case scenario that we could hope for? Yes, no, that that that's right. I mean, I I think if 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 it's if this is the only cluster that that's um, that's active, then that's actually really good news. I mean, we'll, there'll be a long period of uncertainty unless we can nail down that direct connection to the border, where we don't know, um, and and uh, and that'll that'll of course make a lot of us who are watching very nervous. Um, but you know, if this turns out to be the only cluster, then then actually I think we've probably got quite lucky. It's not a kind of told you so moment, but you obviously had been suggesting that all workers should be tested at least once a once a week. Workers who are on the front line is this proof of how necessary that is? Uh, yeah, look, we still don't. You know, yes, look, I'd still like to advocate for that. I still think that's an important thing that that, that we should be doing, but we still don't know what the cause, you know, what the root of transmission was, and. Um, and, you know, it may well be through the managed isolation and quarantine facilities that, that that's what we were specifically commenting about. Um, but there are other possibilities, um, that, you know, for, for entry of the virus. And so I think, you know, that'll be really important once we find out what 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 has been the chain of transmission um, into the country, the, you know, finding that loophole and shutting it down, I think, um, would, would be absolutely essential. Just one thing before you go, do we know enough about this virus to rule out the fact that it could have been dormant somewhere or a reinfection of a person who's had it earlier and was already in the country? Yeah, look, I, I think we can rule that out on the basis of the genomic evidence at, at this point. Um, you know, it's, it's of course, the, you know, this is a tricky virus. It is a new virus. Um, but but I think that's extremely unlikely at this point. Really appreciate your time this evening. That's Professor Sean Hendy joining us via a sometimes scratchy Skype line.